Okay, for this problem, we're looking at 3.1, number 41 and 43 from OpenStax Precalculus, and we want to write our, our um, complex number here in a simplified form. Um, so what I'm going to use is, I'm going to, we're going to make an observation here. If you have um, i to the zero power, that's equal to 1, i to the first power is i, i squared is negative 1. I times I is negative 1. I to the third power, if you look at this, this is I squared. I to the third is I squared times I, but I squared is negative 1. So I squared times I is negative I. I feel like I need to show more work than that. Okay. Then if I come to I to the fourth, what do I get? I get I squared times I squared which is negative 1 times negative 1, and that's 1. And it takes us back to where we started. I did the, okay. So let's just look at this pattern. And I had some stuff that I put in there that made it just a little bit um, hard to see, but it goes, I went 1, I, negative I, no, 1, I, negative 1, negative I, and back to 1. So look, if I have I to the fifth, this is i to the fourth times i, but i to the fourth is negative one, so that gives i. i to the, should I show that little step there? i to the fourth is one times i, so I get i. We see that we're gonna follow this, the same patterns. So I get i to the fourth times i squared. Well, See, if I take out i to the fourth, I'm always going to get one. So I get one times i squared, but i squared is negative one. Now I go to i to the seventh. i to the seventh is i to the fourth times i to the third. i to the third is one. No, I'm sorry, i to the fourth is one. i to the third, if I look up above is negative i. Then i to the eighth is i to the fourth times i to the fourth, which is one times one, which is one. That finishes the first problem. But the thing to look at is that these guys repeat themselves. And that if you have, especially if we look at powers of i that are multiples of four, I get one. I to the fourth is one. I to the eighth is one. I to the zero is one. Those are all multiples of I. So see if I, instead of, if I just, just allow myself to get lazy a little bit, I look at the patterns. It just keeps repeating the patterns. It goes one, I, I'm looking at the patterns. So we start starting at the very top. It goes one, I, negative one, and then negative I, and then back to one again. We can just keep repeating these patterns. I to the 12th is 1. Now, what's I to the 22? Well, what I can do is I take 22 and I divide by 4. 4 goes 5 times. That's sort of, you know, whatever. That's, that's interesting, the 5 times. But what I'm interested in is not really that how many times 4 goes into 5. I'm interested in the remainder. The remainder is 2. So what this means, if I look at this, is that 22 is equal to 4 times 5 plus 2, and that i to the 22 is equal to i to the 4 times 5 plus 2. So that's i to the 4 times 5 times i squared. Now, what we've shown here, yeah, well, yeah, I think we've shown, I mean, to, to, to some extent we've shown that... Um, that if I if the power if the power of i is a multiple four, then that's equal to one. So therefore, if I have i to the four times five, i to the twenty, that's one. And so I have one times i squared. Now look, it this much of this could have been done in our head. Four goes into twenty two five times, but the remainder is two. So instead of doing all this work here, I can just say that i to the twenty two is i squared. Because what I'm looking at is the remainder, that remainder two. Those are, those match up.
That's what I'm really looking at. I have the remainder two here and the remainder two here. I didn't have to really show all the stuff in between, but I see the I squared is negative one, and that's our answer at the end. What this, this idea of finding the remainder has a name, it's called mo modulo. So we have that 22 modulo four is equal to two. So this is the remainder when dividing by four. Modulo, I mean, it could be modulo five, modulo six, but for complex numbers, we do modulo four. We divide four into 22, and we get a remainder of two. And, and the modulo works when you have integers. Okay, so we have these two solutions right there. I put a bunch of other highlights, but maybe I should just make this clear. That's our answer. And this is our answer.